Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday and before I forget, I'm wearing my awesome Rhapsody blouse again because I just can't stop wearing these in this awesome uh, border print. Anyway, today is about Sew My Style and I'd been looking at this challenge for the last two years and just recently this year I decided, hey, you know, I'm going to participate. I looked at the list of patterns that were going to be sort of chosen for the year and I noted that on some of the months I already have the pattern or there's patterns that I'm interested in. You know, there's a lot of choices this year, lots of options. So I thought, you know, rather than be just stuck making one pattern I don't really like. <laughs> Um, yeah, this month was really good because uh, the options were cardigans and I'm going right into autumn now. I know I'm in the other hemisphere. Um, my, my autumn and winter is not cold, is not that cold. And so just a cardigan is all the layering I need on top. And so this month we were making the Blackwood cardigan by Helen's Closet or the Como cardigan by Style Arc. I already have the Blackwood cardigan. It's a, per a pattern I purchased last year. So I thought, you know, you purchase a pattern, they are not cheap. Um, I try to get at least three or four makes out of a pattern so that I feel that the, the initial investment of the pattern was, was worth the, the amount, you know what I mean? So I have already made two Blackwood cardigans last year, a black one and a blue one, navy blue. And I'll put some pictures here so you can see and I'll also link to the pattern review I did last year. I even did like a failed one hour sewing challenge because it took me 90 minutes but hey <laughs> it's easy to make um, maybe not in an hour but just over an hour so um, just recently this cardigan has been updated size wise now the sizing has been changed to contain numeric uh, characteristics uh, meaning from 0 to 30 and there's two cup sizes available, um, a B cup from the size 0 to 22 and a D cup from sizes 12 to 30. Um, unfortunately, when my husband bought this pattern for me with his PayPal, <laughs> he didn't create an account. He doesn't know, uh, like we, we can track back to the payment of the PayPal, but we don't have an account. So I can't access the update of this pattern. So. I'll just stick with the old one, it works for me, I've already done it twice and I don't know, maybe I'll try and see if I can email and see if I can get the updated version but for now I can't. So um, I decided to uh, make mine out of a brown ponty and um, I had a dream and I came up with a significant hack that's more visual than anything else. So um, I'm not going to tell you anything else. <laughs> Um, and I'll just let you hop into how I did this hack and then I'll be back to show you. I basically printed out pages one through four of the Blackwood cardigan. Well, that's actually pages two to five. Two of the first pages for the back part and then the other two for the front. So um, you can see the notch marks there for the sleeves at the back there, the double notch and the front one. So what I want to do is create a yoke that will eliminate the shoulder seam. So up there we have a 3 8 of a seam allowance so I'm going to fold that down and do the same at the front. Actually the front I'm going to place it right there on top and you can see that the arm side continues there you know so I'm just going to um, tape that together. So I have <clears throat> eliminated that shoulder seam by uniting these and what I'm going to do is just choose a random spot at the back and I want to finish it above the double notch of the sleeves so let's just I've got it like uh, on top of my cutting mat so it's really straight cutting mats are awesome like that they help you create really straight lines so this is going to be my yoke yoke there and I'm going to leave myself a centimeter of seam allowance there and then at the front I'm going to flip this around so I'm going to put that on the line there and do a straight line at the front uh, let's say it's going to be there 
sort of at the half point of the arm side if you can see now I'm just eyeballing that's that's how I like to work so that's where the yolk is going to finish and I'm going to leave a centimeter of seam allowance there so this is going to be on the fold right there that side there so what I'm going to do is transfer these marks to my main pattern pieces. Okay, so here I have my front yoke piece there. And that line on the top is where the stitching line is going to be. So I'm going to transfer that mark to the other side so I can put this behind the, the normal pattern piece. And I'm just going to match up the arm side there so I'm right on top the same. And I can see through that line, and this is where the sewing line is going to be. That is where the sewing line is going to be. So I'm going to add a seam allowance towards the top there. And I'm not going to cut anything out or anything, I'm just going to fold it. And this is the piece, this is how I'm going to cut the front. That I've marked everything there, I'm just going to cut this excess here, I don't really need it. This is the back piece of the cardigan and I'm going to place this behind it. Just match up everything so it's the same. And I can see my new line for this yoke through that. And I'm going to mark it here. So I need to give myself a centimeter of 3 8 inch of seam allowance towards the top. So this is the piece I'm going to cut for the back there on the fold and I can trim this out here. So the backs, they both have their seam allowance, one centimeter added towards the, the top there and that one towards the bottom united, there will be the same thing and actually this is just one piece and the front will go on the other side. Chosen this cotton lace as the contrast yoke, I have aligned all the lines so that everything matches and I've put my pattern piece there on the fold, I'm going to cut that out and now the layout of all my other pattern pieces. Um, I'm only using 112 centimeters for my black wood. I've placed my back and my front pieces there right on the edge on the top. I have lengthened them. Um, now because this is pointy and it doesn't stretch, I have blended from an L to an extra large at the hips just to be on the safe side. Um, my previous ones I've made a large. I've lengthened them by 12 centimeters. I want a longer black wood cardi. So I mark that with chalk. There is my band that I have also lengthened the same amount I did to the main pieces and there is my bottom band there on the fold. I've made sure that that bottom band is the extra large as well. Here I have sewn the back piece to the back yoke with my 3 8 seam allowance. I'm just using straight stitch and now I have to um, overlock that and I'm planning to do some top stitching on the front to keep it flat so um, yeah the seam allowance is going to be pressed down overlocked and top stitched on top and that's what you're seeing now it's been overlocked magically <laughs> now I'm going to flip it around and with my quarter inch foot that I always use I get really straight stitching like that I'm just going to do a straight stitch all the way across the back piece of the cardigan um, just to keep this flat you know it's hard to press these types of fabric it is quite thick so I'm doing top stitching and I'm going to do the same with the front so this is my front piece of the cardi attaching it to the yoke the smaller part that comes to the front using the same 3 8 seam allowance and I'm also going to overlock and top stitch in the same way I did with the back. I'm super excited about how this is looking. Um, I have a, attached the yoke piece to the front and the back. I have uh, stitched it on with a centimeter seam allowance, overlocked it, and then I have top stitched that down to make it lie flat and so that this is the transparent side there. So I've uh, put the seams facing down and then top stitch with my quarter inch foot there. 
so that is how it's gonna look now i'll just continue the same order of events i have to do the side seams put the band at the bottom and then the band here um, the neck band um, I still haven't decided how I'm going to finish the sleeveless armholes, so I'm going to think about that afterwards. Here's a closer view of how this is going to look. It's going to look super nice and I'm super excited. At this stage, I've finished the cardigan. All that's left is finish those armholes and I've decided to trim about 3 8 of an inch off just for comfort and the way I like it to look. I'm going to finish these with bands. Now these bands don't need to be cut on the bias. <clears throat> I measure the circumference around the arm side and cut a band about 90%, so a bit shorter, by an inch wide. I have attached those at both ends with a small seam allowance and overlocked one of the edges. One other edge I left raw and that's what I'm going to use to attach onto the body of the cardigan. So I'm going to go ahead and place that around the arm side pins all the way around and then I'm using my quarter inch foot with the needle move out, moved over to the left to get a really precise 3 8 seam allowance there and I'm going to sew that all the way around both armholes. I am then going to clip just to turn the corners better and then flip over these bands um, on you know over that seam allowance so that seam allowance there you can see is going to be the reference so there I am pinning this all the way around and you can see it's very small what's left on the other side. Now why didn't I fold this again because I don't want the bulk and um, yeah I wanted it really neat on the edge so that's how I'm sewing it. I have hand basted that. Uh, hand basting makes life easier for me for these types of projects where I really want preci precision. So then um, I lengthen my stitch length because I'm going through quite a few layers and the fabric is thick so with my edge foot I'm going to sew these bands down and finish nicely nice and neat all the way around both armholes now I'm going to show you um, at the end there I don't backstitch I just sew up to where I started and I leave loose you know like a loose long thread that with a needle I pull over to the other side and do a hand knot and it's just a more delicate finish. I do this on most of my garments, especially when top stitching is visible. So no back stitching for me, thank you. Now I'm going to show you my hand basting is on the edge but not right on the edge. So you can see my edge stitch is, is way closer to the edge than the basting so it makes it really easy to pull out afterwards. It makes life easier. Cool, so that little piece of cotton lace I'd had in my stash for maybe three years, maybe more. I found that little scrap in a market, a fabric market in Bolivia on the street literally. And I always knew that it was going to be a detail of something because the piece was so small I couldn't actually create a whole piece out of it. Um, so I thought this yoke being the, the cotton um, beige color would go really well with the brown. And I'd end up with something neutral that I can throw on things. So yeah, <laughs> here it is. And you can see that at the back, we have the back yoke on the grain line because you can see the lines of the lace going up and down. But because I eliminated that, that shoulder seam, we have the lines going slightly off the grain here for the yoke piece. And that is absolutely fine. This is quite a stable type fabric. You know, it's not like gonna stretch out of shape or anything. And I was really careful to manipulate this really delicately um, while I was finishing it so this wouldn't like this store out of shape because you can see it's sort of uh, on the bias this little piece here but it's just all one piece it's just the way it's been cut out um, so the construction as such was exactly the same you know it's got the same bands that I chose to top stitch to keep flat because this is quite bulky thick ponty it goes all the way down because I lengthened it by five inches. Um, I like it longer, I am tall, and the two lengths that I offer, the very short hip length and then the longer length, doesn't really suit me at a, at a flattering height. It sort of just hits me mid-thigh-ish, and I don't like it there. I like it long, long or short. <laughs> I've actually never made the shorter version. I don't think I ever will. We shall see. Um, of course, I never ever do the pockets. I just really loathe pockets like with, with all of my passion. Like I just don't. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. 
so there's no pockets there and there's the bands at the bottom and you can see there how I'd finished that it looks really neat now I just want to point out when you're cutting bands to do these finishings on sleeveless things on knits they don't need to be cut on the bias bias doesn't exist in knit patterns so you don't need to go through the trouble of that you can just cut straight straight bands you know and um, for this structured knit I cut my band at 90% of the total length of this measuring you know circumference um, if I was using um, a thinner stretchier knit I would probably go 80 or 85% um, but that's the amount I use and it's just the right amount to keep it all tucked in and, and not like flipping and looking horrible so yeah super happy with this and so sleeveless I think it really goes well with this blouse because of the colors under there and this light color I think makes these other colors pop but that's just my idea <laughs> can go over other things as well so you can see there how there's no shoulder seam and the yoke finishes sort of at the mid height of my arm side there um, I just eyeball this I'm not technical about these things because it doesn't really matter I really didn't want this yoke to end up too close to my bust or like on top of the bust or like through the bust or something like that that's why I decided to do it up there around mid arm side is a good amount for me you can see uh, I like wearing skirts above the knees or dresses above the knee and I like my cardigan to be around that height now I could have used a bit more length two inches maybe but this skirt is usually a bit longer than what I would usually wear that is all i wanted to share maybe you want to make something like this similar with another pattern uh, it doesn't have to be the black wood cardigan you can add this yoke detail and eliminating that shoulder seam to basically anything you want so that is what i wanted to share my saw my style project for march um, april has some trousers and i don't think i'm going to be participating in april i think i'm going to jump back in may but we shall see i hope you have an awesome sunday and I'll see you back very soon with the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And happy sewing. Bye.